I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some videos and pictures during my trip, my time there in the Philippines. I want to thank God, first of all, for this opportunity that He had given me to witness, to minister to His people. And as a result of that opportunity, many were happy to hear present truth for this time. It was hard for me to leave. As I mentioned, fell in love with the Philippines and the people there. They are so friendly and they love Jesus with all their heart, mind, and soul. And they were hungry for the truth. And a few of them, as you are about to see in the videos, have also surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ by going through the water of baptism. Notice carefully. We give God all the honor and glory for that opportunity that He has given. We will also like to thank all of you for your prayers and your support and for your comments, for your words of encouragement. You know, the Bible tells us that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And because of some Macedonian calls that I've been receiving, I feel impressed to respond, to answer these calls because we are told in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And this passage goes along with Revelation chapter 14, first angel's message beginning in verse 6. The Bible tells us, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, verse 7, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And the third angel's message also goes along with this urgency, this warning, and the proclamation of present truth for this time. I have decided to answer the Macedonian calls wherever the Lord opens the door for the truth to be presented not only before His people, present truth for this time, but also to those who have not heard of the salvation of Jesus Christ. Notice with me on the screen what this says here. 
in our cities as verily as in far off lands. There are people of all nationalities whose souls are precious and who must hear the message. The way must be open to reach these unworked fields. Decided work must be done. Opening must be made. That's the commission that has been given unto us. Matthew chapter 28, Acts chapter 1, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and also Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Notice another passage here on the screen. God's people have a mighty work before them, a work that must continually rise to greater prominence. Our efforts in missionary lines must become far more extensive. Notice the word extensive there. A more decided work than has been done must be done prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ or the second appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's people are not to cease their labors until they shall encircle the world. The vineyard includes the whole world. Every part of it is to be worked. There are places which are now a moral wilderness and these are to become as a garden of the Lord. The waste places of the earth are to be cultivated that they may be bud and blossom as the rose. According to what she's telling us here, we must have present truth, presence, and churches in every city, in every place. Notice she goes on to say, new territories are to be worked by men, inspired by who? By the Holy Spirit. New churches must be established. What kind of churches that must be established? Notice, let's continue to read. New congregations organized at this time, emphasis at this time in new churches, at this time there should be representatives of present truth in every city and in the remote parts of the earth. The whole earth is to be illuminated with the glory of God's truth. The light is to shine to all lands and all peoples, and it is from those who have received the light that it is to shine forth. The day star has risen upon us, and we are to flash its light upon the pathway of those in darkness. Notice carefully now. A crisis is right upon us. What must we do? We must now, by the Holy Spirit's power, proclaim the great truths for these last days. It will not be long before everyone will have heard the warning and made his decision. Then, once again, shall the end come. And as Christ says in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 35, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already, to harvest. What's the problem? The harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And we have to make sacrifices in these last days. You see, the Macedonian call that Paul received, that Macedonian call was about a lifestyle change. That Macedonian call was also God redirecting Paul's life. We must allow the Lord to redirect our life and to help finish the work in these last days. God needs laborers right now. He needs some of us to get involved, to go to the front line, to do medical missionary work, because truly indeed, the harvest is plentiful, but we need more laborers in the field. May God richly bless you and give you the encouragement to do something to work for Him today until He comes again.